The takeaway here, race can be a factor in hiring sometimes, but it can never be the only factor. And no quotas. That's usually a date with SCOTUS disaster. That is how we got here. So let's go deeper into the legalities tonight with the future-focused impacts of today's ruling. We're bringing in Alan Crone. He's an employment law attorney, CEO of the Crone Law Firm, and also the author of The Law at Work. Alan, Chief Justice John Roberts wrote, the Equal Protection Clause is, quote, universal in its application, no preference for race, color, or nationality. This was about universities, but universal is a big word. Could that apply to businesses? I think almost uh, all observers of the court believe that's where we're headed. You know, Title VII uh, prohibits discrimination. Let's just talk about race for a minute on the basis of race and color. Uh, and so that is equally applicable to discrimination against one race as, as another. And I think in 2023, we may need to rethink what we're trying to do with affirmative action and uh, get a new modern approach uh, to try to even out some playing fields. Okay, well, some programs intended for that, DEI programs, for instance, enrichment programs, um, DEI trainings and, and what have you for current employees, could those become a legal liability? Well, I think anything can become a, a legal liability if it's, if it's mishandled. And if what you're trying to do in 2023 is make sure that people are considered on their, uh, their merits and not on extraneous uh, accidents of nature, such as color or gender or, or what have you, then I think that's what you need to, to get at. I mean, if, if you want to give preferential treatment to first-time uh, college students, you know, the first time uh, in their family or socioeconomic level, that would allow someone to use admission to Harvard or admission to a, a school as a way to step up the social ladder, then I'm, I'm not sure that any kind of racial preference is necessarily going to be the best way to, to do that. Hmm. Because you've got, yeah. you've got children now of, of highly successful people um, who don't need necessarily a leg up, uh, but they're getting the benefit of the accidental nature of their race. And going into the professional world, diversity quotas are, you know, as we said, maybe not allowed, but diversity goals are ubiquitous. I mean, you, on earnings calls, they're talking about them. When screening candidates, does race just become an unspoken and is that legal where nobody says it, but everybody knows that race counts? Well, I think you can be intentional about that without necessarily being arbitrary about it. The way we get over this as, as a workforce is to be intentional about spreading the net as wide as you can. And that means going into uh, places that maybe you don't ordinarily go to, to find people who are different than you. If you're a hiring manager and you're, just, you're going to your alma mater or you're going to uh, social uh, outlets where you uh, frequent for your candidates, then you're probably gonna have a fairly homogeneous uh, candidate pool. What smart employers, I think, have done and will do in light of this decision is to say, yeah, we can say that diversity is important to us as a company. We don't have to have a quota that says we're going to hire 25 percent, you know, one one race or gender or whatever. But we can say we want to be a diverse company. And the way we're going to accomplish that is find mission driven people who share our values in all kinds of different places. It's going to be a lot more work. Affirmative action is easier because you can just say, well, we got to hire somebody in this category. Being intentional about it and having a plan to go and create a diverse uh, workforce, that requires a lot of effort. But I think as a lot of studies have showed, uh, a diverse workforce, mm -hmm. a d diverse decision-making body uh, is better and more competitive than a homogeneous group where everybody thinks the same way. Sounds like you're saying it's attainable, uh, a little fraught, going to be a little tricky. Employment law attorney Alan Crone, thank you.